you bring up a lot of interesting points. And what I'm most interested in is how much does today's performance plant a seed in Ancelotti's mind? Obviously, this was something he designed himself of something that does this sway his Once de Gala at all. Our first real, I would say, Once de Gala, I, I guess maybe Atletico was that, but really like when, when the Classico hits, we know that we're going to see what Carlo Ancelotti, in his opinion, in his mind, is our best 11 that will start in the Champions League final. And I wonder how much today is close to something that he might try. Because every time we think about, um, you know, the onset of Gala and we try to play this game in our mind, typically it, it usually involves one of Fede or Rodrigo and does not exclude Modric. And it's and it's usually a four three three at the very least three in the midfield, and the attack can kind of look like you know different variations. Sometimes it's symmetrical. This season it hasn't been at all. Uh, or you know, you know who's the third attacker with Vinicius and Benzema? Obviously, Rodrigo's at his best right now, but you know there's obviously room for Fede Valverde to be that guy. How much does this all of a sudden become one of the one of the best options on the table, or perhaps dare I say the best option? I think a lot of people. You know, a couple of our staff members included really thought that this might be our best starting eleven. I do think maybe there's some context to it that, quite frankly, <laughs> as good as we are, I have to really say Shakhtar were horrendous, and it's a, it's an absolute miracle that this game was only two one. If we're looking at it objectively, there's that. Um, you know, playing against an elite team, how effective can this team be? I would argue that. If you're trying to break down a, a defense, whether they're playing a high line or if they're playing in a low block, having the wrinkle of Rodrigo floating around and linking up with Benzema and Vinicius and Fede Valverde gives you a pretty pretty great chance at breaking down both options. I think it's interesting because when you look at Rodrigo in this role, and I don't know if anyone else here th saw this in their minds, but I actually kind of got reminded of Isco in the diamond because... The, an, an inverted version of it in a way because Isco mostly hedged to the left. Rodrigo kind of started on the right and would come centrally. And I think it, it really works because he almost acts like an extra midfielder. You have And it allows Fede and Carvajal to take the entire right wing. And Fede can play that pseudo role better than anyone right now. You have Rodrigo going to the left, linking up with Vinicius. You have him going to the middle. Look both of look at both of our goals. It was Rodrigo from a central position. I'm going to pull up the video in a second and share my screen, but I I think this actually might be an option. I I guess it begs the question because when you look at the dynamics today, Cruz was actually the deeper of the two between him and Chuamani. Cruz was playing deeper. Chuamani would go forward, and he was con con and it was just it would flow that way. How much does the dynamic change if Modric is in there instead of one of Cruz or Chuamani? Um, it would be interesting to see. I don't think it would change too much. Um, although I, I think actually, alternatively, like if you throw Kamavinga on there instead of Chumani, I, I'd be really curious to see how these dynamics work. Because essentially, what you're doing is you're creating a double pivot with Rodrigo in the hole floating around, and your pressing has to be pretty good. And today, I thought the pressing was really well. But there could be some defensive dominoes there because, as unpredictable as Rodrigo is with his off-ball runs and how hard he is to defend. Um, he also may not be in position to, and that, that was the main problem with Isco and the Diamond too, right? So how much do you think we can actually see this as the quote-unquote onset de gala, or do you think, you know, that this is just kind of like something we saw in passing and it's just one option that we have and not something necessarily that we're going to rely on? Well, to me, I think if if this is not our once de gala this definitely is the second best option after our once de gala i say this because as you mentioned against some of the other quality opponents who will press real madrid's mid block more real madrid real madrid more in the mid third i think madrid might suffer a little bit if we are only playing chuamini and cruz there and it, and the formation is basically a 424 with the four forwards <laughs> with Valverde and Vinicius on the two with Benzema and Rodrigo in the middle. So I think if Ancelotti against, for example, a Barcelona does decide to drop either Fede or Rodrigo and include Modric, I would understand that. That would have to be something to do with having more control over the midfield because this was a game where you 
you essentially didn't need any other you know closer bodies near Cruz. He 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 had his he had his like usual great game all by himself. But I can understand mentally inclining towards uh, playing the his traditional four three three against an opponent who would press us more, especially in our uh, in our defensive third and, and our mid third. But this is this is really close to our Ponce de Gala if already is not. But I guess the the El Clasico who would be the question uh, like the answer to our question. Uh, I think that is that is the if everyone's fit, that is the eleven Ancelotti will play in the Champions League final final as well. Uh, so yeah, I guess we, we just gotta wait uh, ten or eleven more days. Uh, I do have some other points to make about the rotations that are going on right now. I think those will come gradually in the pod. But yeah, that that's my way. If if this is not the best eleven, it's it's the second best for sure, hands down. I, I guess where I'm conflicted, and I think some people were taking this a little bit too far, is that this is our absolute on de gala, and and to me. If Modric is playing the way he's been playing the last two years, I have a lot of trouble benching him in a game where the season is on the line. Given what he did against PSG, yeah. given what he did against Chelsea, given what he did against Liverpool, like I, I just don't know if I if I want him anywhere except on the field in in those moments. The benefit of a game like this is if you're playing a team that is going to give you more trouble defensively and testing Cruz back there in transition. <clears throat> it's a quick fix on the fly. Fede can just shift from his right wing to the midfield and Rodrigo can go into a 4-3-3. And that's why I like it, is because there's an immediate plan B right there without even having to make a sub. You can just shift the formation back to the 4-3-3, stay compact defensively. I, I think it works. Um, you you mentioned Kroos. I guess I'll just share my screen here so people can see the numbers and I can think I can pull up the heat maps too at the same time. So... Just going to share my screen really quick. Uh, let's see. All right. So you mentioned Cruz. <laughs> Just absurd stuff. The numbers here are insane. Just throughout this game. 110 touches for Tony Cruz. 98% passing accuracy on nine passes. Five key passes. And if you look at the numbers, I think I, I added it up. But it was like, I think 21 key passes between Fede, Benzema, Cruz, and Alaba. And it's basically just a chance-generating machine today. The amount of shots are ridiculous. Vinicius, 9. Benzema, 8. Fede, 6. Rodrigo, 4. Too many, 4. Like, it's not, it's not crazy that Cruz said it should have been 7-1. That's, that's not crazy. Um, I also just wanted to bring up the heat map so everyone can kind of visualize where Rodrigo was, etc. Um, I, think, I think it's always helpful to look at it this way. I mean, obviously, this shows us uh, the heat maps here are basically where the players had their touches and not necessarily where they were off the ball, although there are heat maps that do that. So here, Rodrigo, look at him. The highest touch, the highest amount of touches he had was right here in the middle. <laughs> quite a bit on the left, quite a bit on the right. That's why I said he looked like Isco in the 10. Fede dominating the right. Carvajal also pretty high up the pitch. Mendy, I think, got pretty high up the pitch decently as well. Chuomeni right here. And then Cruz a little bit deeper to the left. Vinny mostly to his left. And Benzema, as usual, just kind of floating, but mostly to the hedge to the left side there. Um, and I thought we could visualize this really quickly because I thought no play really exemplified Rodrigo's role better than his goal. 